Hello! Today we'll be finding out what's in this small but exciting little box from Fox here. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, click on it and it might tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So what is this? This is called the Foxeer Pico Razor camera. It is basically a tiny camera and I'll just get it out of the box because there's really not much to see. Uh, aside from the, the cute little box you have in a little plastic bag. This tiny camera, it is so tiny, um, as soon as I take the lens cover off it's even tinier. This is a 12 by 12 mil, you've got to call it a nano FPV camera I suppose. Um, from Foxeer and it comes in a couple of flavours. This is the 16.9 version in PAL. You can also have 4.3 version it also comes in NTSC. And it's a micro CMOS camera and it says it's got a 1 third inch sensor which is pretty big for a tiny camera like this. Also says it can fly in day or night. Quite how good it is in night I don't know. 1.6 millimeter lens and quite unusual for such a small camera. It's got quite a range of voltage input so 3.8 to 16 volts so you can plug I say a 4S, almost a 4S directly into it. Um, I wouldn't go quite that high, but certainly 3S. So I was interested in this because ages and ages ago I reviewed the Tyro 69, which is it here. And um, it was a bit rubbish until I changed out the props and it was really good, but the camera really let it down. And a couple of people have suggested me changing the camera over. Someone suggested um, the AKK micro camera and Oscar's backpack didn't fit in it was too big this is a particularly small little hole uh, 3d printed part you need to slot a camera in this is even smaller than that and I thought why don't I put this in because that camera really did let it down it was really you know when you look up at any sort of lightness and the, the ground goes really dark it was it was one of those old things so I think I'd like to install this see how it goes see if it flies a bit better so um, yeah let's do that now so this is the Tara 69 as it is and it had a very sort of simple VTX and camera. The camera just slotted in this uh, little TPU mount and uh, went directly into that VTX there. And it's, it's a small little micro camera there. And if anything, I think the little Fox here is actually smaller. So I'll have to check whether that will slot in. But yeah, I'm basically just going to cut this connector off and solder it into there and see if I can get it in. I'm not sure which way it goes up. I'm, I'm presuming it's that way, in which case it'd just be a case of finding how we can get that slotted in there. Seems to fit. That's. It, it's not exactly rocket science holding it in there. It's like, can you slide it in or not? Yeah. All right, well, let's try soldering it in and we'll see what happens. Now, I managed to take the wrong camera to the field, so I'm holding it in such a way where I've muffled the sound. So you can't really tell what I'm saying, but aside from the fact I'm saying it's a bit overcast and that's quite good to test the camera. The other thing I was talking about is, I'll show you here in close up, the actual camera is so small, um, this TPU mount basically used the fact that the normal 14mm camera was a little bit bigger, so you had to sort of squash it in there and then the sort of friction held it together. Where this is just a couple of mils smaller, it actually rattles around there, so you see I've just plopped a couple of blobs of hot glue and that keeps it in there nice and tight. Anyway, on with the flying footage. Just to remind ourselves of the problems of the original camera, here's some footage from my original review. And the problem is when you get a little bit of light above, you can see how the trees darken out. And when you're in quite close proximity to trees, that's what you really don't want. That's quite bad to fly in. And if it's sunny out, you get this big sort of black spot where the sun was. So not great stuff there. Anyway, this is the new camera and it's quite similar conditions to that first bit of footage we had on the stock camera and um, already I'm thinking well this is seemingly much better there's a there's a nice reaction to light if anything it's perhaps a little bit too bright you see when it we go into darker sections the the sky sort of whites out a little bit but it seems to adjust pretty quickly when we come past and I'm having no problems picking my uh, way through the overhanging trees and stuff and I'm just trying to have a look here sort of looking upwards and looking back down to see how it looks and uh, we've got the sun right in our face here so this is always a good test how's it going to cope can i still see where i'm going to get under this branch even though this is just a little quad i'm still worried about this branch i've hit it so many times now with so many different quads so i'm just looking up and down from the sun just to see how quickly the light change happens it's a bit of a jolt when it happens but it seems pretty quick pretty impressive all good so far yeah, I'd have to go as far as to say this is possibly the best little nano camera I've uh, I've used so far. It just seems, well, like you're not using a tiny camera. It seems like one of its sort of big brothers. 
Um, if anything, the the footage is maybe a tiny bit washed out. Uh, I can adjust the brightness there, of course, but the colours seem pretty true. Anyway, I'm perfectly happy flying this in the field. Um, really confident with uh, how it's looking. So let's go and, and find some trees and mess around with them. So here we are in my favourite little tree spot at the moment. And what I'm looking for here is when we're under cover like this, the light adjusts and sometimes you get this bloom effect as you can see the outside and that will bloom over some of the trees so you can't see as much detail going forward this camera seems to handle this very well so we've got a nice balanced light you can see again the sky is quite whited out there because the the uh, the brightness adjusts but it's not uh, so bad that it actually interferes with the picture so yeah i'm i'm getting confident now about this camera and i'm really sort of enjoying just mucking around in the trees Confidence, of course, is a double-sided coin. You start doing like more interesting things, let's say, and, and crashing into bits. I have to say this Tyro really does hold up well. It's so light that when it hits something, it's got all this time to recover. And, uh, you know, you fall over once, you get back on the horse, and you go back and you try and do what you were trying to do the first time. So I just kept going and kept hitting stuff and basically racing around. So I couldn't, you know, make any claims about, yeah, this camera's helping me see these little ghost branches better than before, because it, it doesn't. Unless you're on some HD system, the ghost branches are still going to be ghost branches. What's important, though, is that the colour and the brightness is balanced well enough so you can pick stuff out as soon as you can. I feel that really helps. Uh, that says it, it's still mostly... Uh, luck more than judgment half the time but because the little 69 doesn't go that fast it's it's fairly easy to you know work your way through and sort of see where the likely branches are going to be before you get there uh really uh is is a good fun little flying quad this one i'm, I'm really pleased that the the upgrade of this camera um is going to make me fly it a bit more and it's so sort of discreet as far as quads go because it barely makes a little noise especially on these little two inch avon props it uh, really holds itself nicely making plenty of mistakes though this was a, an attempt to kind of split s through a tree which really didn't support a split s and so by the fourth battery of messing around and looking for interesting gaps i of course managed to stick it in a tree and get it stuck there fortunately it's not too high just there. So I shook it down out of the tree, came straight down, no damage that was apparent, but when I took it out for a fly you can see these little stars happening and you can see the modes changing. We're getting these little micro losses, so something wasn't happy there, so I decided to sort of limp it back and land it. When I got it home I found out that the little plug where the receiver plugs in had just come out a little bit hitting that tree, so plugging that in was no problem, but yeah it's, it's a bit disconcerting to see RX loss appear on your screen all the time but we got it back there was no damage done great fun to fly and the camera handled really nicely well yeah what can i say that camera performed awesomely really enjoyed it and it seemed a perfect little replacement for this quad so although i'd say it's, it's hugely recommended if you've got this sort of thing my only word of caution is the size of it because normal nano cameras are 14 by 14 mil this little guy is 12 by 12 and doesn't have any sort of mounting hardware around it um, and it doesn't come with anything in the box like the frames where some of the other cameras come with so just make sure you've got something you can mount it if, if you're interested in it that's that's the only worry with this sort of thing it's a case of like squashing it in there putting a couple of bits of glue just to sort it out if you've got a more traditional build where it you know it wants screws going in the side um it's not it's not going to work for that you'll, you'll have to find some sort of mounting thing for it that's the only word of uh, caution there. Aside from that, really nice camera, best nano or micro type one I've used. People have asked me to review the uh, Cadex Ant Nano, which is sitting here, which I will get to. This wouldn't fit in quite so nicely though, because a good thing about this, it's got um, the option to put the OSD on and, and change some things. So you've got these little plugs sticking out. And when you've got a very tight space like that, that won't quite work for that one. So this is going to go on, on something because this is another one that people have hugely recommended to me. So that'll be coming up soon. But meanwhile, this has been the Fox Ear Nano Razor camera and was kindly supplied by Banggood for review. So many thanks to them. And of course, you can find links down below if you want to check this out in more detail. But for now, I hope that review has been helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.
Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.